Hello guys, Gator Unleashed here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys will drop in and hang out. Um, hope you give a like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel. Uh, it's kind of fun. Doing, some, doing a lot of gun stuff. Uh, I love all these guns and things. Um, and in the summer I'm going to fix the shooting range or in spring. I was going to this fall, but there's too much going on. Um, but today I want to talk about something that I feel like is important. Uh, and also I want to touch on uh, anything I say here on this channel is just simply my opinion. Uh, anything that I brag on, that means I like it. That don't mean you will like it. Everybody's got to make their own choice. Um, and that's kind of what I was going to talk about today. And, and I think I've touched on it a little bit before, but really wanted to go into it more today. Um, choosing your personal protection weapon. Uh, choosing your self-defense weapon. It's a major decision. There's so many choices, so many things to consider that a lot of people don't think about. Um, I think a lot of people just simply go with the flow. You know, you hear about guns. You know, you have you hear people talk about a Glock being good or, or uh, Springfield or whatever. And as I've touched on many times, what works for me don't work for you. Maybe maybe what works for you don't work for me. Um, so today, in today's world, with all the shooting ranges, and uh, I think there's like, I think I read somewhere there's 8 million new gun owners in 2020, um, and maybe 2021. I think that's fantastic. I like to see uh, everybody carry. I like to see everybody. Uh, I think we have a better society if uh, everybody's armed. That's just my opinion. I think we have a better society if the bad guys doesn't know people are dis disarmed. Uh, that's That gives them much more motivation to do things versus them knowing there's a chance of going into a place and getting shot uh, or, or even attacking somebody and getting shot. Especially, I think women especially need to get really, really get into some firearm personal protection. But choosing your weapon there's so many things to consider, and and I'm I'm going to show you what a gun here that I carry, almost over the last ten years I've carried this more than anything else. Uh, this is a Ruger LC9. It's loaded. It's got a safety. It's got a safety in the safety zone. You've got the loaded chamber indicator. Um, you know, if I was doing a gun review or something, I would I would unload this. Uh, but this is this gun's loaded all the time. Gun ain't loaded, it ain't gonna help you. You ain't got time to go load a gun if somebody starts trying to mess with you. But but what I want to stress and try to bring to, I hope somebody gets something out of these videos I do. What I want to bring some attention to is choosing your, your weapon that you're gonna carry. This gun that I'm showing you here and this holster, this holster is very comfortable by the way. And when you're trying to decide what you're going to, when you're trying to make your choice for your weapon, you know, your weapon can, weapon can, uh, weapon can save your life, it can save your family's life. So it's a really major, major decision. Um, and you've got us, I like a, I like a firearm that's got an external safety here. I just like that. And, and if you get a gun like that, you need to practice shooting once a week or maybe once every other week. You don't have to put 100 rounds through your firearm, but... I think you're I think you're much better off to shoot more frequently just a few rounds versus going out and shooting 200 rounds on one day every six months uh, because frequency will keep you familiar with your gun um, and if if you have a gun with a safety you need to practice grabbing that gun and flipping that safety off and firing that needs to be second nature um, there, there are several rewards to that. Uh, first of all, the safety is a reward simply because it's a much safer firearm. I feel like with that safety on, it just makes me feel better. You know, if you got a, if you carry a Glock 43, for example, um, one in the chamber, that that that's just like a cocked gun. I mean, that that is cocked and ready. If you pull the trigger, it's going to fire. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I carry some guns like that though. You just have to be extra careful. You have to be really aware of what's going on. And you, everything you do, you need to be aware of your surroundings anyway, especially in today's world. But some things to consider if you're a first-time gun buyer or if you're looking into buying a gun. The shooting range and putting a, putting a weapon on your side and carrying it all day 
are polar opposite worlds. Now, as far as going to a shooting range, I love a full-size pistol. I love a 1911. It's one of my favorite range guns. I love my Beretta. I've got a Glock 45, uh, and I've shot all kinds of big I like some big revolvers to range to put a few rounds through. And that's great fun. They shoot better. The triggers are better. Uh, Full-size guns are more accurate. Everything about a bigger gun is better at the range when you've got it in a box, carrying it in your truck or whatever. <clears throat> but if you put that on your side and go to the mall with your wife or, or go to a ball game or a sporting event with your husband or, or if you put it in your purse, if you're a woman, if you put it in your purse, that thing is going to become very annoying very quickly. I've, I've went through several firearms and I've also realized you're never going to be perfectly satisfied with your curry gun. There's always going to be something. This was one of the very first uh, subcompact guns I bought to, uh, to carry all the time. And I pretty much have this with me all the time. Uh, I've had this gun for at least 10 years. Whenever they first came out, this is a Ruger LC9, and I bought it brand new when they first came out. Back then, this gun was $400 plus tax, what I get for it. Um, and I've bought so many guns since then because at the range, this is one of the least favorite guns. This is my least favorite gun. The very bottom of the barrel, my favorite guns to go and shoot at the range. It's got a really long trigger pull and that's very troublesome when you're trying to be accurate. Um, you, you can't fire rounds as quick as you can with any other pistol, any Glock or, or any Taurus G3 or any, just about any of these striker fired pistols will shoot much faster than this rapid fire. This gun is just not good at the range. It's just not good at the range. So, so I guess what you need to do, in my opinion, again, this goes back to opinion, I think you need to make a list of what's important to you. Um, and if you have about a gun, then, then look up the weight on whatever. Maybe kind of, if somebody tells you, for example, to get a to get a Beretta, that they're a great gun and uh, they they can hit a bullseye at 25 yards, nine out of 10 shots or whatever, and you start getting in your mind, oh, I'm gonna get a Beretta, okay? Look up the weight on a Beretta, and I don't know what that is. But uh, find something to put on your side and go run around about half a day with it. And you'll see real quick what I'm talking about. So, to me, comfort is more important than accuracy, um, round count. That's another thing you got to consider. Like this firearm here holds uh, seven in the magazine, and you can put one in the chamber, so you got eight rounds. Um, I, I'm totally comfortable with that. I have went the other way with some guns, though, and I have a couple of setups that works pretty good with a lot of rounds. But I've bought at least seven or eight guns to try to carry since I bought this one. And I've still got them all. And that's another thing. Your budget's a big important part of your gun decision, too. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's likes and preferences are different. So don't let nobody tell you what you need to get. Um, you can go to these gun ranges and rent guns, and, and you can find out. You can make a really good, educated guess on what's going to work for you. For me, I still carry this old LC9 with a turbo trigger. It's less accurate. I've only got seven or eight rounds. But I'm all, I, I, this, is, this is better for me to have because of its comfort than any of my other guns that I don't carry because they become so annoying carrying them all day. I bought a Glock 45, which is not a 45 caliber. It is a 9 millimeter. Uh, it's a Glock 17 frame with a 19 slide, I think, so that is. Love it at the range. Um, love it to really have it like in my truck and stuff. But if you put it on your side and go to the mall, it breaks you down. You put 17 rounds in there, and in three or four hours. Now, holster is a huge part, too, and that's something else I want to touch on. This is a very old holster here. Very old holster. It's cloth. Uh, I modified it and put a real good belt system because what I noticed was on these holsters 
if you get these holsters and carry them on your belt loop and they've got up and down slack, you can't draw your gun quickly because when you get your gun, the holster wants to come with it. Um, so that I noticed that being a problem. And I've never been in a shootout and don't foresee that I ever will. Pray to God I'm not. But if I was to get in a shootout, I don't want to be stuck trying to get my gun out of my holster. So... I went and got, uh, I don't really know which gun I got next, but then I wound up getting something like this. It's Glock 48. This gun is also loaded. Not doing a gun review, not breaking this gun down. This gun does not have a safety, as you see. Does not have a safety. This gun is fantastic at the range. This gun is one million times better than that old Ruger LC9 at the range. It shoots better, it handles better, it shoots faster. It's, uh, it's just in every way... It's more accurate. There's no comparison at a range. However, despite going through, I don't know how many holsters, and, and I wound up, this was my best one. One of these hard plastic. This is a Black Hawk, I think. I think this is a Black Hawk. This is a Black Hawk holster. Uh, this was my best choice. This was my best choice. And it's pretty comfortable with this. It's tolerable. It's it's man. You can manage it, but what gets you? Is you go to the mall with your wife, and this this gun holds two. Uh, it's got a ten round mag. So I bought two more ten round mags, and a uh, actually I think it came with two. I bought another one. And I bought a mag pouch uh, that holds two mags. So I put that on my left side, and that sort of balances the weight. But now if you get out running around and carry that all day, and you know sometimes you go somewhere or do something and. It's just much more uncomfortable than my old LC9 with that cloth, just totally comf comfortable holster. So I'd rather, I'd rather, if you can only have one gun, I would buy the gun that's comfortable and less effective at the range versus the gun that's awesome at the range, uh, but because it becomes annoying uh, you just say, well, you know, nothing's going to happen today. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave this gun here at the, uh, I'm going to leave the gun at the house. If you want to leave it at the house, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a gun at the house. Somebody may come to your house and try to bother you, but if you're looking for a curry gun and wind up leaving it at the house, you might as well just not get it. Unless you've just got money to throw around on several different guns. Um, a lot of people don't have that, though. And uh, I'm fortunate to be blessed with a good job and some things where I've been able to buy more guns. But my situation was I was looking for total satisfaction and you just can't reach it. There's going to be some negatives with any gun and any holster you get. I've tried shoulder holsters. I've, I've tried everything and I really don't think there's ever going to be a setup for you, for you or me or anybody else where it's totally perfect. So you got to take the bad with the good and you got to take the pros and cons <clears throat> excuse me I figure out which way you want to go so I guess the point of my video is focus on comfort more so than uh, how many times a gun to fire or who says a gun is cool or this that and other focus on that gun that you, you can put in your pocket or, or get a good little holster and carry it comfortably and have it with you all the time uh, and there's, even at that, there's more things to consider. You know, you got to consider uh, what caliber you want. Uh, I sort of like 9mm. I mean, it's it's pretty flexible. <clears throat> However, I do like a 45 ACP. I feel like if you got in a bad situation and shot somebody with a 45 ACP, they're more likely to be done versus a 9mm. But... A lot of stuff goes into that. And if you get your firearm and work with it, you can defend yourself. Uh, if you shoot, so if somebody's bothering you and you, th you start throwing lead at them, uh, first of all, if you start throwing lead at them, you, you probably, if you don't even hit them, they're probably going to get the hell out of there. They're, that's probably going to be the end of that. Even if you just got a twenty two, uh, And that's something I think women should look into is a lot of these. I'm going to do a video on a Taurus TX-22 here before long. It's fantastic. It's awesome. Any woman can shoot it. It's not got a lot. Of, it's not got no recoil. It's not loud. It's not gonna hurt their ears. Um, 
a lot of, I think a lot of women are afraid of guns, and that really troubles me. I've got some uh, nieces, I've got some cousins and things that are, oh, they, they live by themselves, and they, some of them live in big cities, and they're afraid of guns. So, But they are interested because they're starting to realize how bad our society has gotten. Um, so I'm going to try to work with them this summer and, and introduce them to some firearms, and hopefully they can get on on a personal protection path. Uh, I highly recommend everybody get a concealed carry license if you can do that in your state. It's all any kind of gun education you can get is fantastic. Uh, any kind of license or certificate you can get is fantastic. Uh, a concealed carry will also put the law on your side if something does happen. Um, it's just great. It's just absolutely fantastic to get anything like that you can. Um, so it's just it's just so much in this in this uh, you know self defense is a huge thing. It's been self defense has been a thing since the history of man. You know, there's always bad people. Uh, there's always friction and trouble and fights and this that and the other. So, it, and we're in this era now where they've tried to defund the police and especially the bigger cities. You know, so you're on your own. You're on your own. Um, Take, take courses, learn the laws in your state and your your uh, local county, whatever. Learn Education is fantastic as far as if push comes to shove. There's a little bit of differences about everywhere. Uh, but that's kind of all I wanted to touch on. I hope that you guys get something out of this. I keep things real and I keep things simple. Simplicity always works, in my opinion. We, our society today, everybody overcomplicates everything. I hate that. It drives me nuts. Uh, so just go to the most basic things. Get a comfortable gun to carry. Work with it. Get a quality gun. Get a gun that's, you know, there's a lot of good quality guns out there today. So don't sacrifice quality. Um, but you can sacrifice all kinds of things at the range if, if you're gaining comfort going to carry your gun. That's all I got. I don't want to keep these videos over 8, oh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I've done, a pre, uh, I've done a video on ammo. Actually, I've done a couple of videos on ammo. I've touched on it. You can still get ammo at your local Walmart, guys. And I can't stress enough, get ammo. Walmart will succumb. They will surrender and stop selling any ammo. You won't be able to get ammo in the near future anywhere except, a, except your local gun store. And eventually, they will pass laws like they have in Illinois and places where if uh, somebody buys a gun or ammo at your gun store and shoots somebody, then they can sue. The family can sue them, and they ain't going to be nobody to sell. It ain't going to be worth it for anybody to sell anything firearm-related. No, they're not going to tamper with your Second Amendment. These people say, oh, they're not going to touch the Second Amendment. Well, no, they don't have to touch the Second Amendment to disarm you. They do not have to touch the Second Amendment to disarm you. Nothing complicated about understanding that. I don't know why people that go to college 13 or 14 years cannot understand the most simple things, but it's what I see constantly. Um, I practice what I preach. This week, I've bought, I've bought three boxes of, this, uh, boxes of this at Walmart. When you find this stuff, if it's there one day, chances are you'll go back the next day and there'll be some more. They'll at least get one box. This is 325 rounds, 40 grain, 22 ammo. is is just fantastic. You can shoot it in your automatic pistols. If you can get 40 grain, always get it. That's my advice. And I, I'm, I'm positive that's the best choice. Um, I got this at Walmart the other night, another 100 rounds. Uh, this 22 ammo was 21 something, $21 and something. Can't get that at your local gun shop anywhere near that. This right here was 31, 21 tax and all, 100 rounds of uh, 1,200 feet per second, 12 gauge, low brass, which is fantastic for a million different things. Just fantastic stuff. I got two boxes of this at Walmart this week. 12 gauge Remington, uh, seven and a half shot, 1,290 feet per second. Uh, just, oh, this is just great for sporting, uh, ski shooting. Uh, it's great for personal. It's great for home protection. It's what I prefer is low brass myself. I don't want to shoot through a wall and kill somebody watching TV in another room or if you live in an apartment or something. You know, you don't need 
some brutal shotgun round that's going to go through six walls and 91 pieces of sheetrock. All you need is something that'll shoot a blast of, uh, what is it, one and one-eighth ounce of lead. Uh, you need something, you don't have to have a lot of 1,550 feet per second buckshot to uh, brutalize a home intruder. So any of this ammo is good for stuff like that. Uh, and the reason I want to touch on that is just, again, like I said, practice what I preach. Um, and you may be, you may have a budget that will allow you to buy three or four boxes of shells, ammo a week. Uh, but if you do, no better investment. And I've said that in my previous videos. So there's no use to beat a dead uh, horse to death. I just really hope people will become more involved in our gun rights and more aware of what's going on. Um, you know, it's a bad feeling to need something and go to the chef and you can't get it. It's a bad feeling. We're going to see a lot of it, I'm afraid, in the future. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but if you buy this, this ammo stuff, it's never going to be worth less. So it's a good investment regardless. You just can't go wrong if you've got money to buy stuff with. You can buy some ammo. You can't go wrong. But, guys, that's all I've got. I hope everybody's had a great day on this. Uh, let's see, today's what, Monday? Or, heck, far, today's Thursday, November the 16th. Uh, 2021, or I'm sorry, December the 16th. Man, I'm in bad shape here. It's been a long day. I hope some of you guys got something out of this. I really do. I uh, hope you can like, share, subscribe. I'm going to be bringing more content. Uh, anything I bring will be the best I can do as far as honesty uh, and just simplicity. And everybody be safe, and I want everybody to have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.